Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to start working on the CMM. And the CMM is the coordinate measuring machine. And this is our hexagon 4.5.4 SF. And what it is is a shop floor model. And what's unique about this is it doesn't have to have any air attached to it. So it doesn't have air bearings. It actually has roller bearings on it. And it, it is less accurate than um, a, a model that would have air bearings, but it's, it's still really accurate. It's been really good for what we need. Um, just to give you an idea of kind of how the machine moves, uh, it is PC-based. So what we do here is um, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to kind of be all over the place as I come in here and uh, get everything going. But I've got the control. Uh, the way it works is... It's got a dial here that will allow me to speed up and slow down and then I can move, I can twist the knob up or down, pull back, brings back, forward, forward, left is left, right is right. Those things are pretty self-explanatory. Um, we'll use this touch or this teach pendant for almost everything that we do when we're working with the CMM. And uh, just some of the unique kind of characteristics about the machine is that uh, it does have already a grid where you can bolt everything down to it. And so I'm just going to move the head towards us. So I want you to see some of the features on it. And the probe itself is just magnetic. So it just sits on there. And um, it does have an orientation of how it goes. And what we want to do today is we're going to work on, this is module 10, so we're working on calibrating the CMM. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to take and do some cleaning on it. So I've got some spray. I'm going to spray my rag down. I'm going to wipe down all the surfaces of the machine itself. And I'm going to start with the probe, all the pieces for it. Just a real good alcohol is about all you need for it. Uh, so you want to find the orientation of the arrows on the head and then you're ready to go. This is an articulated head so it'll be able to move around, shift around as you need to. Um, so next thing I want to do is go ahead and slide uh, using the pendant. You slide it all the way back and as I look here just for some general maintenance I can see that I've got my slides on this and I'll bring the camera around so you can see it just a little bit better. So what I have in here is um, just some guides and what I want to do is just kind of clean those up. It's been a while since we've been running this and since we've been there uh, working with it we've done a little bit of floor work and some other stuff in here so the environment's gotten a little bit dirty. So I've come in here and I've already done uh, most of them. I've just left this one out here so that we can clean it up. So I want you to clean these surfaces, clean these bearing uh, guides. Go ahead and put my Velcro back, close it up. And so I would do that to every one of, of the axes here. Um, I can take off this cover, which is these screws, clean the z-axis on it. Um, this will take care of the x-axis and this will take care of the y-axis on it. Um, this model doesn't have a tool changer, but a lot of them do. And uh, we can we can set it up to actually do some automatic tool changings by creating some macros. But a uh, tool changer just works like this. It's very similar to the CNC. It'll grab a tool, change a tool, put the tool back, and um, this doesn't have it. But that's just one that we had from another one. That's a Renishaw head. It's actually the same thing as what we have on, uh, on the machine itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the calibration of the probe. Because if you don't have the probe calibrated, you're going to have problems with everything else. And this is all labeled out in Module 10 in uh, Blackboard. But... I thought a visual would be good to have for this since we won't be meeting in class today. Uh, after this, there'll be some questions that you need to go over and answer those 
And then after you've answered those, just submit those uh, and for full points, and that'll just be an easy, easy module for you to to do. So I've got my work surface clean, and now what I have is my my sphere already set up here. Now I already know what size it is, but if I didn't, I would just want to go in and I want to measure the sphere. And so here's my table. And I want to make sure I got everything out of the way. And I want to come in with micrometer, calipers, whatever I'm going to use. Uh, get that measurement for that, and then I should be ready to go. So I'm just going to uh, turn the camera towards the screen. I know there will be a little bit of glare. So doing this, you don't really need to memorize or uh, just mimic every move that I do here because this is already labeled out for you uh, slide by slide, slide by slide in Blackboard. So this screen is, is pretty cool on this one uh, because it is touch screen so I can actually take and drag these around. And I'll back up as to how I even got to this point. So I'll just cancel out of here and then close out of this. Um, so I'm not going to say that. So when we open up the computer, get it started, uh, this is what we see, and what we have is just uh, PC Demos is the the probing system that we use, the measurement system. So we're just going to double click on it. It's going to start it up. Uh, lab is currently what we use as our profile. So you hit OK on that, and then you're going to have a chance to open up a an existing file. So if you're just going to come in and, and do some measurements on something that we already had, uh, we would use some stop blocks um, similar to the ones here uh, to set into a corner so we could nest some parts or maybe we would have a fixture. Uh, most of the parts that we'll be checking will be like the step block that we make um, from our CNC class. So I can hit cancel here because I want to make a new program or actually I just want to come in and do some quick calibrating. So I just want to hit new. Um, use my keyboard and just type calibrate or whatever I want it to be. I am going to be an inch and that's really all I need. This gets pretty detailed here. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but it asks a lot of information about, about revision number and serial number and then everything else that wants to go along with it. Uh, so go ahead and click yes to get my file started. Screen comes up. And all I'm going to do is come in here and it's going to ask me some questions and I'm just going to come around and answer them as we go. So I am working on the profile lab um, and then on this particular um, ball that we're working with and tip that we're working with, I've already got it labeled as T1. And as we go in class next time, we'll, and also on the slides, it talks about the orientation of the articulated head. Um, zero, zero, zero is, is just going down in every direction. So it's just real straightforward, real simple, and down on there. Um, down here in this area is just some information about the probe itself. So if you, if you don't know what probe it is, this tip one has the probe identification for it that tells you everything about this particular probe that is on the machine today so that you'll be able to see what it is and uh, and work off of it so I'm going to back up here and then we'll get this thing started in just a second uh, try and get to a spot where you can actually kind of see some of the action happening uh, what's on the screen won't matter much to you because you've already got it on the slides so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to click measure and I want to uh, manually move over using the hand box. So I want to get close above the top of it and that oftentimes just means kind of getting out of the chair and sitting over it and kind of seeing what you have there and as I go through I'm going to pick, I want to manually position it and then I want to use the DCC, that's the automated part of it, to, to do some measuring. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a manual hit down to the top of it or I can do a, a DCC hit 
where it just automatically knows where this probe head is and it knows where this uh, sphere is already at and the machine knows where the probe head is at. So I can just go in and, um, and click OK on that. It asks me to go ahead and rotate to the T1 uh, A0 B0 orientation and, uh, and so from there on out it's just going to start off and it's going to start probing. It's going to take a series of hits in a, in a pattern that we've already established for it. Uh, that way it's able to uh, measure all the angles that it could possibly measure, or all the diameters, or all the points that it could possibly measure for this tip orientation. Uh, as I were to change into other orientations for um, different different um, movements, I can I can just probe for something different. So that calibration is done for that one. I can then go in and see the results for that. Uh, again, that's in the slides. So I'm just going to move this up and turn the probe itself off and I'm just going to show you how to how to orientate and how to change the head. So if I want to go here and maybe I want to do some probing like this, I can set this probe up to be in this direction. Bring it back around here. If I needed to come in and check some holes, now we're from a different angle. So the only thing that's manual on this is actually the orientation of the probe head itself. So that's the variation from having a machine that uh, automatically indexes the head, like this one here. For this probe head, it has a motor already inside of here, so it does the articulation and orientation for you. So this one on our old Mitsutoyo, we didn't need to change that. It would change by itself, so it would orientate to the spots that it needs to. This doesn't, so if I need to come in and measure this, I have to first qualify the tip, I have to set it up, I have to give it all the information, it's just like setting up a tool on one of the CNC machines, and I would go in and tell it what it is, what I'm trying to do, what my angles are, how it should function, and then I could go in and qualify it. Now where this uh, probe head sits, or where this sphere sits, uh, it's, not, it's not a permanent structure, so we can move it to wherever we need to. It doesn't even have to be on the table all the time. What you'll find a lot of times is that shops will use a kind of a, a certain position for their um, spheres that they use. So like for us, we, we might, if we always kept this plate on here, and if we always did it in this pattern, uh, which we don't, then we might find ourselves moving the probe way over here into an orient or the sphere into an orientation over here, over here, it really makes no difference where it's at. It could be all the way over here in this corner still on this upper surface. It really doesn't matter. All that matters is that I can reach it and that I can do the qualifications that I need to. Now, since I moved the sphere, it does not mean that the probe head is not orientated. All it means is that the next time that I go to qualify it, I'm going to need to do it a little bit differently. So I need to come in and move over to the position of where it's at. First thing I want to do is just make sure that I've got good movement so that I can get around it. See, I'm out of, out of position now. I can't do what I need to. So I've got to move that sphere into a plane or space where I can get to it better. So here in this corner won't work for me on this particular operation. So maybe I want to move it over into a spot where I can see it a little bit better, where I can get to it a little bit better. Turn a little bit more light on in here. So maybe I need to move it here. Again, it doesn't mean that the probe is not qualified but it does mean that the probe to sphere orientation is no longer uh, any good. It's not qualified anymore. So where this sits doesn't matter. We even have the ability to rotate the sphere over on its side or at any angle that we want to. So I'm going to just move this thing down. I always have to have my finger on the button on the hand box in order to get it to move. So if I just try to move the joystick, it's not going to move. 
So I'm going to position it really close to it. And I'm just going to go in and, and do my hits again. And I'm going to use manual plus DCC. And what I want to do there is I just want to manually hit locate the top. Got a malfunction somewhere. I need to stop back up, redo that one. So once I have the probe activated, again, I had it off since I moved it. Come in and I take my hits again. This now becomes a qualification spot uh, for uh, taking care of the uh, calibration of the sphere. So that takes care of just the qualification uh, and calibration for this sphere or this probe uh, using this sphere in this position. Uh, so you can have various, uh, about as many as you can probably dream up as to, to how it's going to work and function. All right, so that's just a little bit of calibration. So you want to make sure that you get all of your uh, questions. Uh, review this video. Uh, watch it again if you need to. Get your questions submitted or get your questions answered, and then you should be ready to go.